Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach, and today we are finally doing it. We're taking a look at this bus station because this is something that we are going to be focusing on today. We are going to completely rebuild our bus network. Now, I want to show you why, and I want to mention a couple of things. First of all, I've added Touch It or toggle it back to the mod list temporarily. And the primary reason for that is I want to be able to turn off district names. I know that might seem like a silly reason to add it back in, but I think it's going to be really helpful today to be able to zoom out and get a good overview of the city. So I want that in here temporarily. Not something you need if you're doing this on a console. You can certainly operate around this. But for me, as I'm recording, I want to be able to give you as clear a view as this as possible. So adding that in. Um, so the bus system in Verde Beach has been expanding for a number of years. And if we take a look at what it looks like, we've got 43 routes, some of which are named, many of which are not, many of which are not all that successful. And when we zoom out and take a look at our routing, uh, we can see that the routes have developed along with the community, which means that when the neighborhoods developed, the routes made a ton of sense. But as the city has grown, the routes have become confusing. And I, I'd like you to imagine actually riding on one of these routes. So it's nice that you can, it's bi-directional, but they're not always completely bi-directional. There's some weird looping that occurs and some oddities that have sprung up as the roadway network has changed. Uh, it's also uh, the problem that a lot of the routes, rather than you know following a particular corridor, so you could say I'm going to hop on the Keller House and, and get to downtown from out here, they meander around and force tons of transfers. So we've got to do something about this. And you could say, you know what, let me just take every route one by one and make changes. And the reason why is, is, is kind of coming back to reality a little bit. So whenever you modify a bus route, you need to take that to your transit commission or whatever your body is that makes decisions about transit and uh, bus stop placement and, and routing placement and, and routing and ask them for permission to change the route. And with that, you have to have a public hearing and in many cases, an equity analysis to see who is impacted by a particular route decision. So uh, in this particular area, this white route right here, uh, this is a neighborhood that is you know, moderate home values, some lower. Uh, so you can imagine there are some lower income residents in this area and modifying this route, you would need to show that you're not having a disproportionate impact on these residents. Now, in some cases, you might decide that a more direct route with faster service is better for this area. And it would require people walking an extra block or two to get to the service. But rather than having an hourly bus, they have a bus there every 15 minutes. Uh, that is a really difficult sell. <laughs> it's really difficult if you're not changing multiple routes at once uh, to show that you're, you're, there's some sort of connection between this, some synergy. So in many cases, it's easier just to, to do a, a major change. So modify multiple routes at once or in more extreme circumstances, redo the entire system. So in my community, this has happened uh, it's happening ongoing right now, but it's also happened uh, 20 years ago and uh, 20 years before that. So it's it's not something that uh, is abnormal, but it is something that takes a lot of work. And it, you have to consider a lot of things. Where are people going? Where, uh, where do they currently live? And who are you going to be impacting? And then there are other things that the game doesn't really talk about, uh, but, but rather in real life. So in real life, Every one of these bus routes, you'd look within three quarters of a mile uh, within a, a, a basically a, a, of any particular route and paratransit service would be available. A paratransit service is the kind of service that serves elderly and disabled people and picks them up at their door and takes them to their door of wherever they're going. Uh, that can involve wheelchair lifts or the like. And those are the sorts of things that you need to be contemplating because if you move routes too far away, you could leave a gap in coverage. So there are lots of nuances that go into real route planning, but we're not going to think about that part of it, but we do want a blanket coverage. And there are places where there is absolutely no transit service. So let's talk about the rules for what we're gonna be doing today. First of all, I want all of the routes to be as straight and direct as possible so that they are easy to understand. 
I want them to be appropriately spaced apart. So things like this, these two routes are very close. You could walk to either one, it's duplicative and they're cannibalizing each other. So we wanna make sure that we're not having routes that are too close. Number three, uh, we want routes to be bi-directional. We've done a very good job of that for the most part with these existing routes. So we have routes that you have stops on either side of the road. So you could get on and go in the direction that you actually want to go in. So we wanna maintain that. Number four, we want to connect to transfer opportunities or high capacity transit. So that is things like this, where we have stops within close proximity of this rail and metro hub, uh, or it's coming over here to a bus, uh, inner, inner city bus terminal or bus terminal and having a connection there so you could switch routes if that is what you choose to do. We also wanna make sure that our routes are not duplicative of high capacity services, if at all possible. Now, a little bit of duplication here and there is fine but we have a lot of transit service in this community that mirrors existing service. Now, a great example of this is one that we might not necessarily think of, but it's this pink line right here. So this is a route that starts at uh, the good old Institute and then heads up here down Oak and then heads down Fitties district. And it has stops right here, right in front of a, a high capacity Metro service that is at the university loops back around comes here, forces a transfer, you come here, and then look at this. The blue line has a stop here, and then it goes here. It's completely mirroring this pink route. And if you took this train, or this, this, this metro, you could easily walk three blocks, most people anyway, could easily walk three blocks and get to this annex. And that might not even be a really highly desired route, so this is things to think about. And if we take a look at this particular route, we can see that we're throwing a ton of buses at it to get fairly modest ridership. Uh, we're seeing 24 resident trips and three tourist trips a week. And we're throwing 13 buses. That means that that bus is a coverage route, a route that's providing access to a transit service without actually providing much benefit. So we don't want that kind of service. Number six. We want to focus our transit routes on high capacity corridors. So Keller House is a great example of this. We really don't have any bus service on Keller House. We have some monorail. It's not really focused on Keller House. It's, it happens to have stops there, but we don't really have any service here. When we take a look, we don't even really have traffic there, but it's the most direct corridor in the community to downtown Verde Beach. You have to remember, this was at one point a highway then it became an arterial, and now we've taken it down to a four-lane collector is what the game would consider it. Uh, but it, it really is still functioning as an arterial. It's bringing in a number of goods and services to the city, but it doesn't have transit service. So if we're giving uh, uh, vehicles the uh, ability to easily traverse the city, we should also be giving it to transit. And then finally, we want dedicated lanes where we can have them. So we want to operate within the existing right of way. So uh, that means that we're not going to be taking this road and demolishing it and adding a four lane road uh, with bus lanes through here. That's not going to happen. We don't have two lane roads with bus lanes, so we're not going to do that. Uh, but on Keller House, which is I think where we're going to start anyway, we could absolutely go through here and do some different things. We have three different options that we could use here. We could certainly go through with our, our four lane road with bus lanes, which is basically this road right here. And if we were to click that, you'd see just, we take a lane and dedicate it towards buses. Uh, or what I'm more likely to do here is take this road right here, which has that median with trees. Uh, and if it were a really high capacity area, we could add this arterial, which maintains the four lanes for uh, standard traffic and then bus lanes. Uh, that have a you, you, you can turn in there if you're a normal vehicle but you can't be in there otherwise so uh, those are really our seven focus areas and I, I i'd be remiss to not mention that this build wouldn't be possible without b squigglehausen's vehicles of the world content creator pack we're going to be using a number of articulated a uh, number of our routes are going to have articulated buses and that is simply because of uh the capacity that we're going to be adding to these corridors and how low the capacity is in the normal buses and how much uh, ridership these routes will generate. So one thing I wanna do is take a couple of snapshots in time. So first of all, let's look at our traffic flow here. And uh, right now we're at 82%, so let's keep that in mind. I'm gonna actually screenshot some of these things. 
So 83 is what I screenshotted. And I want to take a look at our passengers here. So we are looking at about 8,600 resident trips and 5,200 and uh, 5,300 uh, tourist trips a week. So I'd love to be able to build upon that and do better. Uh, and, and I really want to make sure that we're not completely cannibalizing our higher capacity transit with these additional bus trips. I want to add to it, not take away. So we're going to start out by just blasting away all of these and seeing what it does to our traffic. Okay, so everyone's very unhappy with that. I'm going to let this run for just a minute. We'll let this reset back to zero and then we'll take a look at our traffic. Okay, so I've let this run for a while now, and uh, there are a few things that I've noticed. First of all, there's still a baseline of people taking the bus, and I, I'm assuming that those are inner city trips. So people coming from other cities into Verde Beach and stopping at an inner city bus station. So that's fine. Uh, we're, we've also shed about a third of our resident trips and about a thousand tourist trips per week. Now, this has not been evenly distributed. What I'm noticing is that the subway is actually picking up uh, additional resident trips, almost the same in terms of tourists. And we're also seeing uh, a decrease in our train utilization, which I, I'm a little surprised by, but that tells me that we need to have bus trips there. We're also seeing more monorail trips, uh, which is, is interesting, but only for residents. And it's only about 100, not anything significant. Let's hop in and get started. And I want to start with Keller House. So Keller House might seem like it's going to mirror a bunch of services, but it's going to mirror a bunch of disconnected services. And I think it gives us an, oppor it gives us an opportunity to actually reduce capacity here. Um, our traffic flow is the same, <laughs> which is shocking to me, but we're seeing you're seeing it with your own eyes, just like I am as well. So I think we're going to start right about here. This is kind of where the city ends and we get to warehouse land and we're going to convert this into uh, a four lane road two general purpose travel lanes, two bus only lanes. We'll just go ahead and convert this. So why don't we pop out of here and do this so that we can actually see what we're doing. I'll turn off, I'll, I'll leave everything on that that's currently on. Now we're seeing sad faces. I've been seeing lots of sad faces. Everyone's unhappy right now. <laughs> they're not happy that bus service is removed and they're not happy that we're removing capacity down Keller House, but they'll get over it, I promise. I think that this is going to be one of the most successful routes in the entire city. Now for parts of Keller House, we have monorail. So we're going to need to maintain that. And here we've got these lovely palm trees going down. We can maintain those. We'll add those back in later. Okay. So with the Keller House route, I'm going to start downtown. So we will go all the way down here and I want to begin this at this bus station. To me, this makes a ton of sense. We can have a stop along here by the fish market. And then because this is a local service, we're going to have relatively frequent stop spacing. And I want to put those in logical locations where people could cross the street if they need to. And where I see high capacity transit, we're going to mirror those routes and make some targeted connections. So right here, we can make a connection through. We have one over here already. And then we're going to switch the sides of the road. There's a, always a, a question about whether near side or far side stops, so whether they are uh, before or after an intersection, uh, always a question whether one is better than the other. And if you talk to different transit planners, they'll give you different answers. <laughs> so I, I really don't have a good one for you, unfortunately. Uh, it's all situational. And I'm trying to find these key locations. Hopefully we're on both sides of the street. You uh, could make a logical connection. And I'm spacing them about two blocks apart, if at all possible, if it makes sense. And I'm actually thinking about this and I might terminate this at this bus station. So we'll take this into this neighborhood. So this is a very long route, but I'm okay with it. And then we'll make this bi-directional by coming back the other way. And all of our stops are going to be placed opposite of the stops that we placed the first time around. Now I know that this is going to be a busy route and it looks like we have our baseline now 100 and 100. Uh, we're going to take this and we're going to make this a super bendy bus. Uh, this has a lot of stops. We are looking at a route uh, that has that's 31 or 13.5 
uh, kilometers in length, so it's a long route. And you can already see the massive queuing at some of these stops. There's a demand in this corridor for this route. And I'm curious, let's see the, the top stops right here. Interesting, right downtown. All right, so I'm not gonna watch this. We'll come back to that later, but I do wanna name this right away. So we'll make that the one Keller house. And we've got that one. Let's focus on another corridor. And one that I think would make a ton of sense is coming up from this station and heading down right here. And this street, we take a look, it's Mulligan Avenue. So let's come down Mulligan Avenue. We'll start here. And this time we have a number of high capacity transit options that we're gonna to wanna to interface with. So we'll have a stop here, come up a couple of blocks. We'll stop right here at this monorail stop, come up a few more blocks. And one of the reasons I'm okay with this is this monorail is not going in the same direction that we're going. We're gonna stop right here because this provides access to the subway. And then here, someone could walk again to this metro line. And then here, what we're gonna do is turn around within this business park. So I will have a stop here and a stop here. And we'll, we'll fix this after the fact. Sometimes it's just easier to, to, to modify it after it's been built. Okay, so let's go back over here and make some changes. What I basically want to do is just loop around here. The, there was an old route that did something very similar to this, where it just followed the outside of this road. We're not going to mirror that, but it's kind of the end. It's a circulation point where we'll be, we'll be fine. Uh, this, again, is going to be a very, very busy route. Uh, I know that already based on the, the road that we're taking and the density along the corridor. And we'll name this the Mulligan Line. Route 2, Mulligan. I'm going to add numbers to this so that you would be able to either say I'm taking uh, the, the Mulligan Avenue line or I'm taking Route 2. And let's give it a new color. There we go. Next up, I want to focus here in this neighborhood, which if we take a look, it's going down Pearl Hills, Kings Hills, and Fireside Commons. And what I think we need is a route that comes up and provides us access basically to Old Verde Beach, a nice connection between the two of these. Someone could argue that this is mirroring existing service, but it's rather circuitous if you were trying to get right here. Uh, particularly if you were in this area, you wouldn't be able to get to it very quickly. So we'll go and do that. Uh, I'm going to try to space it as far away from this other route as I can. So what I'm going to do is count right down here and then we'll go down Greenaway. Make sure that we interface with this high capacity transit when we can. Provide some stops on campus so people can get off in a variety of locations. Right here, next to the subway and next to the, start of the front of campus. Then we'll end it here and loop back around. This one's perhaps a bit less direct than I would like it to be, but it'll be all right. All right, so most of this district is well served by high capacity transit, so we're not going to have any service there. But I do want to take a look at this road here. I want to know, we're going to take a look at our naming real quick. So this is Sterling Zoo Boulevard, but it changes to Jackson Avenue. So let's just fix this while we're here. Then over here again, it stops. So we will just extend this out. There we go. And now we could name this the Sterling Zoo route if we wanted or something of that nature. So we are going to start this one right back here and interface with these existing transit options, providing some stops and key locations. So these are going to be fairly close, but they'll serve different purposes. So there'll be a couple that are close because you could use these different alternatives. And then we'll have a stop here. Another one trying to interface with both of these transit routes and that and that that subway line provide a stop here if it'll let me it's not going to by the university i wanted to have a stop here because we have a pedestrian crossing in reality that would be an excellent spot we'll add one here which will provide access to both of these high capacity transit options as well as all of our sports stadiums and then we'll go back into our traditional neighborhood spacing so every few blocks 
And then we'll get over here and we've got some interesting things that we could do. What I think I'm going to do is just go all the way to here and loop back around. We could stop it here and send it back around, but I don't really see a purpose of not continuing it the extra little ways. Provide those opportunities to interface with existing services. And these two are close, but Keller House is a significant barrier here, so I'm okay with it. No one's going to want to cross that if they don't have to. Let's see that sometimes it won't let you get the exact spot that you want, and that's okay. Uh, mirroring service is not about necessarily making it perfect. It's about it being pretty darn close. Now, one thing I'm a little bit nervous about is how this turnaround is going to occur. That's not ideal. <laughs> uh, generally, I'd want to see it loop back around here. So what we're going to do is just change this so it loops around this hotel district. Provide some service there as well. And having extra stops in reality is not that big of a deal because you'll pass some of these up. You kind of plan that in. Uh, but in the game, uh, Sims will split the difference and, you know, that's fine too. There we go, that's the Sterling Zoo line. And I'm going to change the bus on both of the last two lines we put together because I didn't do that. And you can see, look at Keller House, 500 passengers already. And significant pass ups. This might get better with time as the bunching stops. You see that there's a lot of buses bunched together still. So you can't really judge your line right away. You've got to let it run for a while. That's one of the reasons I have it on high speed right now is I just want these to normalize with time. This particular stop right here is going to be a, a really challenging stop anyway because we have folks uh, coming from the monorail from this line and transferring. So there's just going to be a lot of activity in this particular location. So not abnormal to see this sort of thing here. Uh, one of the things I forgot to do is add this pedestrian connection here. This look at that. There's stops on either side. So on Mulligan Avenue and Keller House. So this is an ideal location for a pedestrian connection. I'll pause this for a moment so I don't destroy all of my buildings. I'm hoping that my zoning is still intact. It is not, and it will not be, which is unfortunate. Let's see if I can clean this up. Okay, so I had to move the fence a little bit closer, but I think that those buildings are safe. And we've got our connection. Not ideal, it's kind of weird and funky, but it's going to do the trick. Look at all of those passengers. That is ridiculous. <laughs> just, just absolutely wild. That is the Mulligan line. And I'm curious. If we take a look at this one. Wow, 400. We're going to need to really boost capacity on this. I'm going to crank this to 200 and see if that helps us resolve this. And some of this might get better as we add additional routes through. Right now, there are not many options. The other thing about this is because of how centrally located it is, it, it's drawing people from both sides of the road to come up and come to each of these stops. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. But you can see that it can be a little bit problematic at times as well. While we're here, why don't we come down Vine Street and add a bus here? So this is, again, another high capacity corridor. Excellent place to add this. I'm curious about the traffic here. Not very high. So we are going to definitely add bus lanes here. So this one I'm a little bit dubious on. One of the reasons is we have this metro that is uh, providing service, but the stop spacing is far enough away that I think that we can add the bus service and it, it still has some value. And I'm thinking we actually could double dip here. So we could use this as a circulator service too that gets people to this university, kind of providing that service that we looked at earlier. So I think we're going to do that. So we'll come around here, not 100% mirroring it, a little bit circuitous, but it'll do the trick. There we go. So that'll provide a nice service straight through there. And it'll get you to that university campus and to this high capacity line if you wanted to go to the old campus. So now I'm looking through here. And I want to get some more uh, east-west routes if, well, I guess if this is north, <laughs> it's, it's kind of east-west. Uh, we're going to need more routes. And what you see is that there's kind of a gap here. So we are going to try to meet the need here. So we'll start the route down here. And I'm probably going to try to interface with that transit down there. 
when we finish this up. Now I don't want to move this too close to the stop because I see some queuing backing up to here. The last thing I want to do is add buses to the mix of that and make it worse. Now this is an interesting one because we have a one-way couplet. So this is technically a collector, totally a appropriate place to put a bus. So we're going to do it. Uh, the problem is our collector couplet doesn't break through. So we're going to have to send this down and join back up here. And then we will end up on a local street. Now one of the reasons I wanted to keep these to high capacity corridors as much as possible was simply because of the noise that buses generate. And I can show this to you in just a moment. Now for this portion, what we're going to do is send this back around this way. And I'm going to actually break this route just a little bit. And we'll just provide that interfacing opportunity. That is good enough. So there were a couple of things I noticed. I added an extra stop here. That's not necessary. They can walk between the two. Although it is a bit challenging. That's kind of a long length. It, it'll be fine though. All right. So very good. So we're, we're making some progress here. Uh, so it's all about looking at your distances between your services. And what I'm noticing is that there's another gap kind of in the middle here. And that is in between this service that we have kind of down here. Although when you think about this service, there's a large swaths in between that are not well served. So we're going to add a mirroring service again, right about here and kind of follow down through here the best we can try to meet up here and then maybe turn back around a little more circuitous than I would like it to be. But our roadway network is really dictating what we're doing uh, for better or for worse. So uh, we'll have to, we'll have to do a couple of things, but before we do that, let's take a look at our noise. Cause I mentioned this, and I think it's really important to understand this part of it. So when you look at the buses, they're actually showing up a lighter shade of red than freight, but they're still red. So that's why I want to keep those as best as much as I can away from residential streets, um, considering or low volume streets, because they will have a significant impact on the buildings there. Unless of course I add trees. Uh, I've also kind of been lacking in my, naming so we need to make sure that we don't forget this so route five give that an orange color and then route six let's see <laughs> what street does this even predominantly go down zeus yeah we're just gonna call it zeus that'll be it'll be good and you can see we're already starting to creep up in our transit numbers again we're a, a little over halfway where we were at before which is really impressive. Um, we are also starting to see some of these lines get some crazy utilization. Keller House, I am concerned about. Oh, do we have any stations that are really backing up? Some, not nearly as extreme as the Mulligan line. I think we're gonna boost this by about 50% and hopefully that'll clear our queues for Mulligan. We're good now. Okay, so let's get back to it. And where I want to add a route is again, another kind of parallel route to this local route that we had over here. I'm gonna begin this here and again, try to interface with those existing services. Now this will provide local service from that, that Metro, which is also valuable. And now here's where we're gonna get a little bit off and what we're going to do here is we'll have a stop here. We'll have a stop here because this will interface with all of these other routes and then we'll send it back down. And then with this, we could certainly add more service if we really wanted to, but I think people could walk to most of these routes. Uh, I think the one thing that we're probably missing over here, maybe a mid area north south route, we'll add that and then we'll call it good. So we have right now just this route, which is going north south, and then we have another route right here. But in the middle here, I think that we could use something. So we'll add this one right here. Now here's another route where I am going to just kind of have it circulate around again. So I added a stop here because I didn't want it to disrupt this 
half of a collector couplet. Um, we could certainly upgrade this street to have dedicated lanes. Uh, if we take a look at our tra traffic, it's pretty sparsely used. So why don't we go ahead and do that? We will have a road diet here and it will be just fine. In fact, this is probably great. It would make this a much better place to be a pedestrian. I think here I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, we're not going to see a lot of bang for our buck here. A uh, couple things. I mean, this is our last build. I know that some folks would hope to see these as one way, a uh, one-way set. I'd need to use Touch It or the Network Multi Tool to do that, and I don't have those available to me, so that's why we're not. Uh, there was also some concerns about parking along here, so I removed the parking by adding a grassy terrace, and now you see that more of this parking is being utilized. So very pleased with that, and you see all the buses traveling down here. Let's again take a look at this. I'm just curious. We're seeing some queuing. So I will increase the capacity of the bus, which I think I'm just going to do basically at all of these. <laughs> Why don't we call this one Ruby? And for this one, this is Builder Street. So we'll make this Builder. Okay, feeling very good about most of downtown. So let's move into some of the older parts of the community. So I think that most of this is well served again by high capacity transit. And where I want to focus now is some of what's happening here by our sports stadiums. So we're going to make a connection to right about here and send this right back up through. I want to be really careful here though, because I don't want this, to, this turnaround to occur on this particular street. And that's not great, but it's we can work with that. Now this again is a local street. This one's functioning as a bit of an arterial anyway, though, and it's going through a lot of industrial. So I'm going to uh, I'll let this one slide. And then I am going to send this back through this area so that we have some sort of connection to our hub here. And then we'll send it straight back. Now, I would love to clean this up. Uh, what I think we're going to do is just send this back into the government district so that our turn is a, a little more natural here. And we'll get a little bit more utilization out of it. So I look at this as a positive. So here we go. Just come right back around. All right. So that is a service that never existed here and would provide... Decent enough service to this area, no matter what block you're in, you have some access to transit. So let's go back to Old Verde Beach now. And we need a couple of routes here. We don't need to do anything too crazy, but we need to do something. And what I think we're going to do, we'll start out at the top. All of these are going to interface here at our hub. So we'll create a new line. And I'm going to send this one up Sterling. We'll interface here with our tram. And then we're going to go right up here so that we can get to this neighborhood over here. And actually, that might even be too high. Let's stick this down here. And I'm thinking that's even too much. We'll turn it around over here. And we want to get this on, on a Semper Verde, if at all possible. And then we'll interface here with our high capacity transit and our other route. Send this right down past our, uh, our, our, our Linus Lewis statue. And we can actually send this one as deep into this neighborhood as we want. So this goes all the way down. I We could certainly... Wow, this is a long street. It's funny, you, you kind of forget how crazy long some of these streets are. I think we're just going to run it. Um, so this would likely be an interline bus service. I'm not sure how City Skylines is going to handle it. Um, interline meaning that this would be um, multiple routes but the same bus changing its letterhead um uh not letterhead but uh, it, it, its face so that it would say it's a different route for portions of it uh just so that it's a little less confusing we will dramatically increase stop spacing along this collector and try to make sure that we have interfacing prop opportunities there is a pedestrian path up here so i'm adding that stop here and then these block lengths are just crazy. And there's nowhere to cross. So we'll just need to make our own spot. The, 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 one of the 
problems of the suburbs, I suppose, among other things. So, <laughs> and then here we have a nice turnaround, so we at least have that going for us. And I really should have had a stop here, so we'll need to add that on the on the way back back through here. Um, and that's just so we can access the tram in this area. Now this route is going to be crazy with utilization. We're going to need to really crank up the number of buses and I'm going to add a dedicated bus lane straight through here. I know that that's going to be really important to make this successful in this area. And I'm going to take both of these. Well, let's, let's look at Gombe real quick and see what we have. We have 200. Uh, so again, super bendy bus it, it, it is. And we have two stops that have over 200 passengers. <laughs> so hopefully our 10 buses can clear that. We'll see. We'll need to keep an eye on that. Now, the Semper Verde is going to be wild. I expect right off the bat, this obviously is a super bendy bus route. And let me show you why. If I can get this located in a spot that is rational. I can't ever, I can't move it. I just, it drives me crazy. What's going on? All right. There we go. All right, so 100 here, 121 here, almost 300 here, 200, 300. Uh, obviously, this could be an excellent corridor for higher capacity transit, but we do have super bendy buses and we have a lot of them. So we are gonna just keep throwing this at the route. So let's take a look at Semper Verde and see where we may be able to increase the transit capacity. Oh my goodness. This is already a bus route. Okay. Well, looking at our traffic, wow, it's heavy there too. So not only is this a bus route, but we've also got capacity challenges here. So we're gonna use our six lane road with bus lanes and hopefully resolve some of our capacity issues. And of course, just demolish half the buildings because you know, you know how we do. <laughs> so. Wow, the capacity challenge is all up and down this road. So the last thing we want to do is make this worse. Um, I don't know if I should say this or not, but thankfully they're all queuing in one lane. So maybe it's not a big deal. And I'm going to hop out of here to make sure that I'm not messing anything up. We want to be able to see what we're doing. And fortunately, we're going to lose lots of trees through this entire area, which people would hate. Especially because all of the traffic through here is very loud. We have freight and buses. And then we already have bus lanes here. I want to look at the traffic volumes though, because that's going to really dictate what we're doing. And what you see is this is just overbuilt, as would be fairly standard in a suburb. So we will take this down. Not because I think that they deserve it here. <laughs> but because uh, it makes a lot of sense. We don't want to overbuild roads if we don't have to. Here we're actually increasing capacity because there were no dedicated bus lanes. These were just simply normal roads that we are now taking the parking lane, uh, which again is totally fine. This area would be so wildly overparked. You don't need additional parking here. This is the one place I'll probably leave it because we have that park there. So you'd want people to be able to park in front of the park. If that makes any sense. Uh, and I think that it wouldn't be that big of a deal to have that there. So I'm noticing a few things that I want to change. We've got a number of signals through here that are unnecessary and not warranted. I just want to make sure that we don't have too many situations like that. I think it's just a couple. And here we actually do warrant one and we don't have it. So it's always good to come back through and look at where you've built already. Because as you go through and you make changes, you just you never know what you've missed. And here, there's so much traffic, I absolutely think that a signal's warranted, likely on either side. Hopefully that'll improve things for us in that particular location. Now this signal has a bunch of bus traffic coming through now. In the past, I would have said that this doesn't make any sense, but now I think it makes perfect sense. In fact, I'm going to prioritize this entire street so that the buses are able to kind of just blast through, add a signal here, Again, this is all about transit priority and making sure that buses can get where they need to go. Okay, so that should get us exactly where we need to be. Make sure, I, I guess I wanna make sure the route's in the right location. And I think I might've gotten off there a little bit. 
Yeah, I got lost a little bit. <laughs> so it's fine. We can leave that not the end of the world. Uh, but it's certainly if, you know, maybe there's some value in, in shifting this over. Yeah, let's just do it. We'll keep it on the street now that we've already adjusted everything anyway. There we go. So I like that. That's a good that's a good fix there. Um, just a few more. I, I, I'm starting to realize that this is a multi episode project. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, this transit system was not built overnight. What I think we're going to do is we'll finish off this area. And then in the next one, we will focus on the suburbs and the rest of the area, then targeting key connections and optimizing some of our high capacity transit. So what we're going to do now is I want to have a route. This is going to be a little closer than I'd like it to be. But what we're going to do is come around. We've got this bus station here. We'll follow River Street and meet up over here at this other bus station. So kind of a duplicative service, but it will allow you to transfer if you're down here. So not totally unreasonable. Now here I'll stop at the ferry. So a little bit of indirection there, but I think it makes some sense. Now here, I was gonna send this all the way down along river. We don't have a direct connection through, so we're gonna pop through here thinking that you could walk a couple of blocks to get to this route. Now that distance is a little much for me and it may need another route. Let's get that one named right off the bat too. We'll make that river. Okay, so uh, Old Verde Beach for the most part is fairly well served. A north-south route through here wouldn't be the worst idea. And I think that the way that we're going to accomplish that is you're going to send one up. We've got, we've got to find our best route. I think I want to connect Gambe over to this bus station with the ability to transfer between the tram and this bus route right here. So that's going to be a heavy lift, but we can accomplish it. There we go. So let's get some new colors through here because we are starting to have a bit of overlap at this point in time. There we go. So again, take a look at our buses. Right here, we've got normal buses on Builder. Not good enough. And here on Zeus, same thing. And on Vine, same thing. So there we go. Look at all of these routes. All of them have just crazy utilization because we've constructed them in a way that makes sense and interfaces well with the other transit options that we have. So all of that said, what is this doing to our other ridership? It is actually starting to cannibalize some of them, which is a little bit concerning to me, particularly our Metro. We're seeing people swap from Metro onto our bus system, which is not ideal. Um, we are also seeing um, increased utilization of our trams, which is interesting uh, for both residents and tourists. So. Uh, there are certainly some interesting things happening. We actually have more tourists riding than before uh, in total and almost nearly as many resident trips, but our overall transit utilization is down, monorails down, everything's down across the board. And I can't necessarily attribute this 100% just yet to our bus system, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion it's not helping. So <laughs> we're gonna need to keep an eye on that because the last thing we wanna do is, is kill our uh, our high capacity transit by adding lower quality, uh, but still useful, um, just regular bus routes. Uh, you know, and I, I'm noticing that I could have made this route a bit longer. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, so I've ended up making this more direct and better at mirroring things. Uh, and we're now connecting a whole bunch of different transit options together. First of all, we got this, we've got the station down here. We've got the tram. We've got this train station, which you could, I believe, walk to. Although I don't know that there's a great connection. Maybe not the train. Uh, but actually right here, you'd be able to access the train through this, uh, this, this hub right here. And then all the way over into Myrtle Gardens and the bus station here. And you can take that to get down Keller House. So you can see how these are layering and adding more and more and more on top of one another. 
to increase the utilization. And as you if we take a look at this, you can see again, some really well utilized stations. Now some of this is again, the lack of service now that we are seeing in some of these areas. And it'll normalize once we build out the rest of our bus system. But uh, very interesting to see. And really one of the last areas that we really need to build out service in is Myrtle Gardens and our industrial district here. Now this is gonna be a challenging one. The primary reason is it's a very circuitous area. This is not a great place to serve with transit, um, but for the purposes of equity and the, the, the reality that many of these folks are likely transit dependent, we need to make sure that they have very good transit service. So we're gonna likely have a route that I'll hate. <laughs> it's gonna be very similar to our old route that meanders around and does a lot even if you want to go with a route that has great ridership, sometimes you end up with a coverage route. And I'm going to send this one right down the middle so that you'd have access to both sides of this business park. And then we'll go down the river and terminate here and then come back around. And I might add a stop or two in that area so that we can interface with other transit options without going to the transfer center. Okay, so I want to add just a little bit more in here. And because uh, Semper Verde is such a significant barrier in this area, I'm okay having stops on either side. Not the best place to be a pedestrian. And there you go. You see, you see how that lays out very nicely. So now we're down to 13 routes on this side of the city. And we're covering basically everything. We're doing a fairly good job of it. You'd be able to walk to some form of transit from almost every part of this area. It's a couple blocks in any direction to get to some sort of transit. Uh, I just want to take one last gander through over here. And I think we've done a good job. The one place where maybe it's not awesome is over here. Certainly right here, we don't have a good service. Um, we could have a coverage route some areas are just difficult to serve though without spending lots of money and this is one of those areas it's just a little offshoot it's difficult to serve um, the most rational solution would likely be to fund a shuttle service from this area rather than having a bus go and that's obviously not something that we can do in the game all that easily so we're going to live without that so i'm gonna let this run for a few minutes and I just want to see where we end up. We'll focus on the other side of the river in the next one, along with some of our other options. But we've done a good job over here today. So let's just let this run for a few minutes and see what happens. And while we're waiting for things to normalize, why don't we have a quick bus tour? Okay, so I've let this run for a few minutes and made a couple of small adjustments here and there as I watch things improve. And what we're now seeing is that our utilization of our transit system is nearly what it was prior to making all of the bus system adjustments, which is really kind of outstanding if you think about it. We have basically removed all of the transit system on the other side of the river from downtown and Old Verde Beach. Yet, our transit utilization is almost identical to what it was. Let's compare our, our previous utilization. And we are just about 300 resident trips down and about 400 tourist trips. But if we take a look, our resident bus trips have increased by almost 1,000 and our tourism trips have increased by about 500. That's, that's, that's wild. Now we have seen a drop in utilization from some of our other modes, but I do wonder how much of that has to do with the lack of service to some of those modes of transportation. So I want to show you a couple of things I had to do to get things moving a little bit better. First of all, at this interchange right here of Semper, Semper, Ve uh, Semper Verde and River, uh, I had all of these stops way too close to the intersection and there was a lot of traffic congestion here as a result. So I had to back those up a little ways 
give some queuing distances so that we weren't backing into the intersection. And the result of that is that our traffic flow is okay here now. Uh, we're at 80%, uh, which is lower than we were when we started, but you gotta remember, we have a lot of road diets through here, which I, I look at that and I think 80% traffic flow is pretty good, particularly when we've reduced the number of lanes so much. 81, that's, that's pretty good. And uh, in this area, I also had to, I had to take an asymmetric road and basically run all the way down West River Street because of all the backups here. Uh, but the result has been pretty good. I also noticed some industrial backups here. Uh, so I, I added an asymmetric road here as well. Uh, and those two changes got me from 77% to 81. So uh, pretty, pretty significant improvements uh, so things are moving pretty good now. Our utilization of our transit system is going really well. And as we improve this over here and get some more routes in this area, I think we are going to far surpass where we were in terms of transit utilization. You see, it, it keeps picking up. Now we are a little less than 100 resident trips down and about 100 tourist trips down from where we began this episode at. So things are improving uh, and uh, that is because we have reduced our uh, the number of routes that we have. All of our routes are looking really good now. Uh, any route that has over 500 passengers, I had to adjust the number of buses on though. So I just, I guess just keep that in mind. Uh, the lowest utilization that we have is on the Ruby line that's going out to the new uh, fishing pier, uh, fishing wharf. And that is at one of our shorter lines as well. Something to keep in mind. Uh, we we have very few stops and it's five kilometers and even with this line this is one i could probably lower the utilization on truthfully maybe take it down to 50 percent 51 why not and uh the like semper verde one of the longest routes this is actually 20 kilometers long this one i had to throw a bunch of buses at it so we're at 251 percent this is very long so i'm okay with that and you got to think it's it's going down both sides of the road so you're seeing 40 on either side at any given time and it traverses most of the city so that makes perfect sense to me and even this one i could probably take down i had some significant cues and now i don't really see any spots that are really hot so i could probably take this down to 200 or something along those lines 201 to get that extra bus <laughs> so uh, i think that we are going to leave it here and we will certainly continue this in the next one but i'm curious what do you think about this how do you feel about this do you think that it was a good idea to, to change the bus system in such a dramatic way or do you like the old system where we were just kind of building upon what we had uh, it's certainly different it's certainly different i think it's better but i'm interested in hearing what you have to say I hope that you've enjoyed this one. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.